Hey folks, dude here, coming at you on Wednesday, 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 July 15th, and uh, of all things, um, well, that box of stuff that Marty Mar sent me that's got all those yummy goodnesses, uh, I, I think I'm going to get into, let me see if I can't work my autofocus and turn it off here, I think I'm going to be getting into Larceny. Now he says essentially the problem is that, um, well, the bottle leaked. Yeah, it, it obviously did leak a little bit. Now, there's something known in the distilling business as the Angel's Share. Uh, it's kind of a running joke where they basically, I think it came from like Ireland with the Irish whiskey and Scott from the Scottish whiskey and all the rest of that stuff. But what happens is when you cask the raw, let me crank this up just, just a bit so you see a little bit more of me. Okay, uh, when you're seeing the raw liquor or white liquor, which is not flavored at all. It's pretty much just straight alcohol with no flavorings, no inducements, no nothings. They put it in the cask of charred oak. Now, in the process of it aging, the barrel is exposed to the elements, and it expands and it contracts versus hot and cold for, you know, seasons of the year. Some of the alcohol does evaporate. So they'll fill the barrel all the way up. By the time they're done, it might be three quarters or two thirds or not quite as full as what you started with. There's always some evaporation of the alcohol, of the distillate, of the total quantity they're in. Some of the alcohol goes away. Well, they refer to that as the angel's share. Literally, the angel comes down and goes, ooh, booze. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was great. So enough angels come by, they drink their share, and the bottle, well, the cask, <laughs> the cask goes, well, the bottle's definitely going to go, but uh, the cask goes down in level, and of course, the angels get their share of booze. Now, um, which brings me to full circle of why this bottle of larceny is going to go, it's didn't crack, didn't pop, it's kind of, oh, you guys really wish that you had smell vision Let me, uh. Do some mild, mild porridge here. I'll commit it to you. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, now from the top, I'm getting caramel, vanilla, leather, wood, obviously. Some sweet notes. Some mash. And, of course... That good bourbon thing. I, I commit it to you. Larceny. Tabs Companions. God bless all of us. A little harsher than I thought it was going to be. It is, it is actually a stronger booze. 92 proof. So most most of your Jack Daniels is like eighty proof, okay? So obviously, let's see if I can't focus this thing up. Obviously, ninety two proof is more booze. Forty six percent alcohol versus forty percent alcohol. Ergo, more, more alcohol, okay? It's gonna be a little stronger. Um, in terms of the actual flavor profile, okay. Let me go back to the other side of it. I'm getting some plum. I'm getting some peach, and I'm getting some other nuances of uh, some other, you know, esoteric fruits and flavors in the background. Th this this stuff's got some character, okay? I'm only going to do a half shot, okay? I'm not going to get completely rough shot here. I'm only going to do a half shot of this. Um, this is very, very interesting hooch. If you guys are looking for some, you know, better than the standard, you know, uh, early times, Jack Daniels, Beam... Uh, you know, all, all those classic bourbons, what have you. If you can find some larceny, it's stronger. It's got to have a little bit more of a kick. But this stuff has got some very good stuff going on in the background. Now, why am I basically banging down a little bit of booze mid-afternoon? Well, of course, i got to chase it down with a little bit of java. Actually, the iced coffee from Panera is actually pretty freaking good. That's why I drink it. Mmm. This is going to be a major show announcement. I, got, I guess i got to tell you guys how it is. I literally was walking around. <laughs> it's is the most ironic thing. I actually was doing, of all things, going to Catholic Mass. My wife is Catholic. I'm a Protestant, but I go to Catholic Mass. I was walking up the stairs to the chapel. 
So I'm walking up, walking up, walking up. Standard day, nothing crazy. All of a sudden, something ping popped. That burned hair kind of thing. Where you know you've really done something really, really wrong. Um, perhaps you guys need a little bit of history. Ten years ago, I did a traumatic injury to my left knee. I've had three arthroscopies and physical therapy before and after afterwards to build the muscle back up, build the knee back up, and get it to some semblance of usability. Now, on my own, they basically told me, be active, be semi-active. When it hurts too much, back off. You're going to have good days and bad days. Don't stoop. Don't kneel. That's for life. You are permanently 25% disabled. That's it. That's as good as you're going to get. So, 75% of me is still pretty good. The other 25% of me, read like left leg, is just rough shot, okay? Uh, my CRX has been parked for a long time because me kicking a clutch right now does not feel good. And I'm going to be aggravating things if I do. So my car has been parked for a very long time. That's why I haven't done the update videos. But the kicker is, after you do what I've done to this thing, you have some major problems. Now, let me go basically how this thing actually works, okay? When God designed the knee, he basically said, I'm going to make a flat surface on the bottom bones, which are your tibia, and I think your fibula. So basically the two bones at the bottom of your leg that attach to your ankle are those two bones that pretty much stand like an I-beam, okay? On top of that is what's something known as the tibial shelf. On top of that is essentially two saucers. The two saucers basically sit one on the inside, one on the outside. So anterior and medial would be inside and outside, okay? Now inside those two saucers, you would basically have two teacups. Now, obviously, you guys have seen enough pictures of, like, you know, the classic dog bone shape where you basically look at the end of the bone and it's like the two little hemispheres. Those two little hemispheres sit in the saucers. So that's what gives your knee stability and ability to articulate. Those two things are basically rotating in the two cups. And it gives a little bit of slop, gives a little bit of give, and it makes sure that your knee is able to do what it has to do. Only problem is, God is not an engineer. God made the knee work, but it's not the best engineering. Things can go really wrong. There's a lot of things that tend to stabilize the knee, which tend to go south. There is ligaments. There is cartilage. There's a lot of stuff that pretty much ties it all together and keeps it all tied up. It's pretty much like a basket weave all around your knee and a couple that run inside. The classic one you always hear people blowing out what's known as the ACL. The ACL is the big ligament that runs down the middle of your knee and keeps everything situated so it doesn't walk back and forwards. Now, when people do the classic thing and they run their knee far forward, they pop the ACL. They have to replace the ACL. There's also things known as the cruciform ligaments. These are two that basically cross over the front and tie your knee in from basically kind of like walking off itself. There's the MCL and the LCL. Both of those, I believe it's LCL or maybe ACL, but no, ACL's in the middle. Uh, LCL. So essentially these two big ligaments run down the outside of your knee that keep your leg kind of from going, you know, popping apart. So you have all these ligaments. There might be a couple of the minor ones I've missed. There's, you know, also like patella ligaments. There's, you know, uh, all kinds of other things to tie it all into place. There's like a whole bunch of stuff that keep your knee in place. All those ligaments that I have are being very, very, very stressed because my anterior and my medial meniscus are pretty much gone. So literally, I have a shelf with a couple of balls on it that are trying to just stay place and, you know, don't really do anything too terribly much crazy. But, you know, there's a lot of people that actually live their lives without good meniscus. Me, on the other hand, I'm pretty well masked. I mean, I'm 230 pounds or so. I got a pretty good amount of mass. I put a lot of work into my knees. Things go south, things wear out, things basically don't do so good. It's wear and tear. So essentially what I've done is I pretty much had my knee in articulation. Basically had it about, you know, 45, 90 degrees, whatever it is. And I did some stress load to it that one of the ligaments just said, no, no, I'm done. I'm, I'm tapping out. I'm done. Nope. Pfft, screw you. You're on your own, buddy. So literally I've done entirely more to it than what it actually was designed for. Now, People then go, well, how'd you mess it up originally? I messed it up originally by wear and tear and by doing a traumatic injury on it. And that, that's just it. I mean, you basically do a traumatic injury to your knee and you just literally wear it out from there to the point where they go, dude, you're as good as you're going to get. It's now completely shot. Literally what we have to do is this point, we, we have to go, oh, this part's all screwed up. Let, let's just take that out. Oh, look, here's new stuff to put in this place. Good, you have a new knee. So literally what I'm probably looking at at this point is I am looking at total knee replacements. No other way around it. It is what it is. So literally you wear stuff out. You got to change it out and that's where you go. So I'm probably now looking at a total knee replacement. And I'm basically gimping around with a cane, trying to be very, very careful not to do further damage to it. And uh, 
that's how things are going to roll. Now, if I do actually have some situation where I can shoot video or I can do like some documentation, oh, I will. Trust me on that one, man. I I'll probably be saying, Mrs. Dude, here here's my camera. When I wake up and I'm coming out of the OR and I'm coming in the you know recovery and I'm awake enough, give me the camera. Because I want to basically go, uh, 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 oh, look, here's the recovery. Oh, there's the nurse. She's cute. Uh, uh, Oh, I gotta go now, but, you know, at least something, okay? So I'm gonna document this thing, if I can, as much as I can. Hopefully Mrs. Dude can figure out how to push one button on the camera. And uh, if it comes out to be, you know, too much of me showing face or something or other, I, I can do some kind of, you know, some kind of editing. Don't worry about that one. Uh, I will be on camera and, well, obviously, I, I know what to expect, okay? I've been doing some studies on my part. Try to bend the knee. But no, some studies on my part, and I kind of know what to expect. I know how it's going to be done, how long it's going to take to recover, all the rest of that good stuff like that there. Oh, I did forget to tell you about something else. Inside your knee, of course, is your kneecap. My kneecap basically looks like a wood rasp. So, literally, it's bone grinding on bone every time the knee moves. So that's wearing itself out, okay? In case in point, you know, stuff is as good as it's going to get. I'm creeping up on the half-century mark, so, you know, stuff does wear out. Um, I do have an aunt, like on Mrs. Dude's side, who's had both knees done. I know what to expect, okay? She pretty much was just absolutely miserable before getting them done. Uh, of course, she's like, you know, 70s. But getting both knees done fixed her major issues. The biggest thing that they're concerned about with my age group right now is if I get it done and I wear it out again by doing excessive sports. I don't feel like I'm going to be doing excessive sports at this point, but I do actually want to get out and be able to do stuff again. Trying to do that while being in constant traumatic pain sucks. That's not going to have happen and it's got to go bye-bye. So I'm going to break up with this one, folks. You know, don't wreck your joints. If you do wreck your joints, see a good doctor and get it fixed as soon as possible. Don't keep ragging yourself out. I'm going to break up with this one. You can keep centering as always, always. You know it. You love it. Uh, or is that Baba? Thanks again, Marty. The larceny is kick-ass. I'm going to break up on this one. See you guys.